Well, this is the part of the show where you, the viewer, send to me photographs of your home. We take a look at ways we might improve the landscape. Now, today, we have a brand new house in Georgia. Now, Cassie tells me that what she's dealing with here is hard red Georgia clay. I know something about that. Now, I know that it's a brand new landscape, and we've got a few shrubs planted, but I want to make a few suggestions that may require us moving them. For instance, these look like ligustrums here. It looks like Cassie has two, four, six, seven. What I would do is plant them, Cassie, in a curve back here, and I would clean out all of this under the pine tree. You'll be amazed at what a difference that will make. Now you've got, it looks like a variegated privet here, 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 and here, which means we have about four of them. And what I would do is come down here on the property line and get a big grouping of them kind of together over here on this side. See that? Now you've got this concrete retaining wall here that we need to be mindful of. And there's a swale that runs right through here, S-W-A-L-E, a low place to shed the water because I understand that, that your, your drainage works from the top of the property down so it hits the swale and goes around. So whatever we do, we have to be mindful of that. All right, now let's erase this and get started. I'm going to keep that line there so we remain mindful of it. What I would do is, since you don't have any trees, let's start with framing the house. I would certainly come down here and think about framing the house with two kinds of trees, at the very least. And I would even come along this driveway, perhaps, with the trees. But you could line the driveway with red maple, which are gorgeous in the fall. And if you wanted to add another fast-growing variety, which will do well in your part of the world, it would be the tulip poplar. So you could have maybe a tulip poplar here. Then think about some ornamentals, and I'm gonna use a different color for those. What if back here uh, we did some flowering cherries? The Yoshino cherry is certainly gorgeous, and a Yoshino, Yoshino cherry back here would help give it some balance. You might even come along the side here with some Yoshino cherries back here in this back area. Okay, now let's take a look at the foundation planting. I'd like to echo the color off of your shutters. You have that sort of burgundy color. So what if we covered this concrete retaining wall with red laura petalum? And what if we came over here and created some red laura petalum, just a drift of it here? So again, we're balancing the property. And then what if we came on the corners and planted a foster holly here and a foster holly here, kind of a nice conical holly like that. And then on either side of the interior where this foster holly is, let's do a big bank of low azaleas here and here. You didn't give me any directions on exactly if the house faces north or south or whatever, so I'm assuming you could grow azaleas there. They don't need to be grown in full hot sun. And then what I would suggest here is a different type of shrub, one there, and there, and there, and one there, where we create rhythm. So we have one, two, three, four. And those could be any type of evergreen you'd like, something slightly columnar. They could be uh, a Japanese plum you. They could be uh, some sort of holly that would stay very small, but you're punctuating all the way across the house. And then in this bed, again, more of the same. I would add these areas across here and I would do boxwood, and I'm gonna change colors here. I'm gonna go back to red. Boxwood, boxwood, and a boxwood here. And then on this side of the swale, of the sidewalk here, you've got this big group of, remember, our red laura petalum over here. What I would do is add some boxwoods that would come up to the side and one over here to create a sense of entry. You could even do a picket fence here and take those boxwoods and line them up all across this side of the swale and let them come back around on that so you create an enclosure in this space because you do have a lot of property. Well, Cassie, I hope this helps. You certainly have what a lot of us don't have, a tabula rasa or blank slate to start from. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm.